All right, welcome back. So today we are going to be continuing our conversation on solving linear systems. So far we've discussed how to solve these systems by graphing. So graphing the two lines on on a coordinate plane, seeing where those two lines intersect, and that's going to be the solution. We've also discussed how to solve these systems through substitution. So by isolating a variable in one equation, fixating that value and taking it plugging it into the other equation within our system to then get the values of x and y. Today, we are going to be talking about my personal favorite, elimination. Um, this is one that you kind of have to trust me in the sense of how it works, and we'll go into more detail soon, but you just got to trust how this works. Um, it does work, and it works every single time so long as you perform it properly. Um, I find a lot of students like this because it's a lot quicker once you get things set up. And But we'll talk about what that means. So elimination can be used to solve a system of equations by adding terms vertically. This will cause one of the variables to be eliminated, hence why we call it elimination, right? Graphing, substitution, there's all root words into the type of uh, way we're going to be solving these systems. A variable gets eliminated. It may be necessary to multiply one or both of the equations by some number in order for us to use this method, but we'll talk about how we're going to do that very shortly. So elimination may require no change to either equation. If we look at the given system, we have 3x plus y is equal to 6 and 5x minus y is equal to 10. What you might notice is that the coefficients of y or opposites, right? The coefficient of y is one in the first equation and then negative one in the second equation. So if we add one and negative one, that turns into zero. So we get zero y. So if we add vertically three x and five x, y and negative y and six and 10, like we did over here on the right hand side, three x plus five x is eight x, one y plus negative one y is zero, it's gone. Foo, oi, right? Oi, zero, y, oi. Okay. And then six plus 10 is 16. So we already eliminated a y. So now we can just solve for x and we get that x is equal to two. And then we go in and then solve, solve for x knowing, or solve for y, pardon me, knowing that x is two. That's what happens if we don't have to multiply. But sometimes we have to multiply one equation by some kind of number to set up those opposite coefficients for a variable. So if we look, let's, let's look over on the left-hand side. So 2x plus 5y is equal to 9. x minus 3y is equal to 10. Both of those equations do not have opposite coefficients, right? We have 2x and 1x, 5y and negative 3y, and then 9 and 10 as our constants. If you notice that they don't have opposite coefficients, but we can turn them into opposite coefficients in the x variable. If we multiply the bottom equation by negative 2, when we do that, we multiply negative 2 by x and negative 2 by negative 3y and negative 2 by 10. Because what we do to one term, we have to do to the other terms, right? We can't just multiply one term by negative 2 and just think that everything else is good old and dandy can't do that. What we do to one term, we do to all the other terms to keep the equation the same value. If we're increasing by a factor of negative two, we have to increase the entire equation by negative two. And when we do that over on the right, we can now see we have two X and negative two X. Well, those are now opposites. So when we add them vertically, the X is going to cancel out and we have zero because two X plus negative 2x is 0. Then we add 5y and 6y, get 11y, 9 and negative 20, and get negative 11. Therefore, we can solve for y to get negative 1, take that value, plug it into one of the original equations, and then find our point of intersection or the solution to it. Sometimes elimination has to require multiplying both equations in the example in the middle, example number two, we only multiplied one of the equations, but sometimes we have to multiply both of the equations to set up those opposite coefficients. So it starts out with 5x plus 3y is equal to 2 and 4x plus 2y is equal to 10. 
Notice we don't have any opposite coefficients. We don't even have factors of the same number. Like, like five and four, I can't multiply four to get five. Two and three, I can't multiply two to get three. So we have to multiply both the top and the bottom equation. And it doesn't matter which variable you want to eliminate. It's whatever you feel is easiest and most efficient in order to help solve the system. You can eliminate the X, you can eliminate the Y. It doesn't matter. So we're gonna multiply the top equation by negative two and the bottom equation by three because we're gonna to try to cancel out these Y's. When, when we do it, again, we multiply the entire equation by negative two and the entire equation by positive three. Thus, we get negative 10X plus negative six Y is equal to negative four, positive 12X plus six Y is equal to 30, and now we have these opposite coefficients, negative 6y and positive 6y. When we add them, we get zero. And awesome. So our goal here is to set up opposite coefficients. If we can set up opposite coefficients of the same variable, then we're going to be able to use the elimination method by adding vertically. So with that, please work on problems one through four on a guide notes and resume when you're ready to move on. All right, if you listen to my voice, that means you've worked on the front side of the guide notes and you're ready to work on the back side. So a system of equations can be solved by graphing, substitution, or using elimination, right? So we have three different tools in our belt to help solve for these systems. We can use them by graphing, we can use them by substitution, or we can use them by elimination. Using graphing is going to be best if both of the equations are solved for y, or if you want an estimate of the solution, right? Normally, if we have y is equal to and we have a graph handy, we want to graph them. It's going to be a lot easier for us because graphing in slope-intercept form should be like clockwork by now. We graph the intercept and apply the slope, two points, boom, line, and then do it again. But if we don't have a graph handy, then sometimes we can't use graphing because we're going to get a true estimation and we want the exact value, right? We can use substitution if either equation is solved for a variable, like y is equal to 3x or x is equal to 2y plus 5, or if it has a variable with it with a coefficient of 1 or technically negative 1. So that means it's going to be easy for us to isolate that variable. So if we had 2x plus y is equal to 5, well, it's easy for us to isolate that y because we could just subtract 2x on both sides and we get that isolated variable. So if you have a, a system that has either a variable already isolated or it's easy for us to isolate that variable, then we're going to want to use substitution. When it comes to elimination, we want to use that if both of the equations have the same variable with the same or opposite coefficients, right? So if we have both of the x's in the system are 4, right? Well, then it's easy for us to do that. We can just multiply one of the equations by negative get opposite coefficients. It's whatever you feel is best for each situation. You can graph, use substitution and elimination on the same exact system and you're going to get the same exact answer every single time bearing you did the algebra properly. It's whatever you feel is best for that situation. Elimination I find is best when you are working in standard form and both of the equations are written in standard form. Substitution is going to work well if you have a variable that's isolated or if you have um, one standard form and one slope intercept form, then you already have have that y. Graphing is easiest when you are physically given a graph, right? We, we shouldn't be choosing graphing if we don't have a graph because then we have to make it and then we don't know if the distances between the units are, are equal and proper and it just gets messy. Right? So as we continue to practice, we're going to figure out what situations work best for you and your choices using graphing, substitution, and elimination. And sometimes it's gonna be necessary to manipulate your equations to get them into any three forms above, right? If we wanna isolate a variable, we have to move some terms around. If we wanna use elimination, we have to have those opposite coefficients. Sometimes we have to manipulate. So if we are trying to solve the system on the left, y is equal to 3 minus x and 2x minus y is equal to 6. Well, one equation is solved for a variable, so we're going to want to use a substitution. On the right-hand side, 
negative 2x minus y is equal to negative 5, and 3x plus y is equal to negative 1, they have the same variable with opposite coefficients. So we're going to use elimination, right? Because negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so then we're able to use elimination. So it all depends as to what you feel is best given a situation, right? As we practice, we're going to see that certain setups have better, better um, opportunity for us to use substitution or a better opportunity to use elimination. It's all about being most efficient. It's great if we, if we can do it through one method, but we want to be as efficient as possible. So sometimes we're going to use substitution. Sometimes we're going to use elimination. It's up to you to decide what works best for each situation. Again, if you have a variable that's isolated already, you want to use substitution. If you have opposite coefficients, you're going to want to use elimination. And then once we start to see that those don't exist perfectly, then is when we have to make a choice. Hey, do I want to isolate a variable and manipulate an equation? Or do I want to change the system into having these opposite coefficients of the same variable? It's, it's up to you to choose. And as we practice, you're going to get more familiar with what situations work best for each process. And again, you can use graphing, substitution, and elimination for every single system, and you can do it three times, and you'll, you'll get the correct answer each time, bearing you did graphing correctly, use the substitution property correctly, and you use the elimination method properly. Awesome, folks. I know that was a lot of just talk. It wasn't a lot of showing, but please work on problems five through seven on the guided notes. Keep up the great work, folks. If you have any questions, please jot them below. Again, this is something we're going to be practicing a lot. So keep, keep up the great work, and uh, I will talk to you soon.